Hey guys, my name is Kitty. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a Q&A video. So I posted on my Instagram and on my community tab here on YouTube that I was going to be doing a Q&A video. Um, and I had some people ask me some questions and I'm going to be answering them in this video. So thank you so much to everybody that asked me some questions. Low-key terrifying <laughs> to put a ask me questions on Instagram. Because it's like, oh my god, what if like no one asks me anything? <laughs> That'd be a very humbling moment um, for me. But you guys did ask me questions, so thank you so much to everyone that asked me a question. Uh, I'm going to try and get through all of them in this video. Um, but I do love to talk, so this video might be long. <laughs> but I have them all written down on my Notion, so let me just pull them up so then I can answer the questions. I just listed them as they came in. I didn't like separate them into sections. There's like some bookish questions and some like life-ish questions. So it's all jumbled together. I'm just gonna go off reading them one by one. First thing though, before I just like get into it, I, I felt like I should do like an icebreaker, like just tell you three facts about myself, which I think is hilarious. So <laughs> if you wanna tell me three facts about yourself in the comments, I would greatly appreciate that. So three facts about myself. One, my name is actually Kitty. A lot of people don't believe that that is like my real name. It's not short for anything. It's not a nickname. It's like my real name on my driver's license, on my birth certificate, Kitty, K-I-T-T-Y, Kitty. <laughs> a lot of people think my name's Katie or Catherine or something like that, but no, it's Kitty. It is, it's Kitty. That is my name. <laughs> so I'm gonna be turning 30 this year. I was born September 25th, 1993. So maybe turning 30 this year. Um, and that makes me a Libra sun. I am also an Aquarius moon and a Taurus rising. Um, if anyone else is interested in astrology, there is my big three. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys some facts about myself um, as an icebreaker. <laughs> okay, so let's actually get into the questions themselves. So the first question I got, which honestly is the best question. It's the best question. <laughs> which is the best Twilight in the franchise? Okay, this is actually very important to me. I really thought about it and I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to choose cause like, I'm not going to choose things. Sorry to everybody, but I'm not gonna choose just one thing. So Instinct was, oh, Twilight, the first one. Cause it's the first one, you're beginning of a series. This book shaped me as a reader as a person i love twilight <laughs> like I, I i really do love twilight it's not even funny i love twilight um so this made me a reader this book is the reason that i got into reading i read this book i think i was like i don't know 14 15 in high school read it lost my mind i was like wait i can visualize like i can read something and be like in a completely different world with different characters and I can imagine all of this happening and I, I was just like blown away like I was like blown away by that and this is when I got into just reading in general when I started reading a lot of YA fantasy romance was in high school um and it was because of this book so this book is like important to me in like my reading journey and just my life I love this book so much so first instinct was to say okay it's Twilight but <laughs> but the book in the series that I have read the most times is actually Breaking Dawn um and it's not the whole book <laughs> it's definitely not the whole book I read the whole book the first like the day it came out I remember vividly going to Barnes and Nobles waiting in line to purchase Breaking Dawn at like midnight I remember my mom and my dad took me um and uh I remember waiting in that line and I remember getting home and just staying up the entire night until I finished it. Like I didn't sleep that night. I stayed up to read Breaking Dawn. Um, so I have read Breaking Dawn obviously, but whenever I do my rereads, I start from this part of the book. I start from book three, Bella's perspective. I start from here, which is about like, it's like, I don't know, 40% of the book. I always reread this part of Breaking Dawn every time. I always skip all of this <laughs> and I jump straight into this and I reread book three like I don't so uh, an obscene amount of times like so many times and I really really love this book because I feel like this book is where we get to see a lot of like the fantasy 
that surrounds vampires because we get to see all these different vampires from all these different covens. We get to see how basically like turning can basically have you uh, developing like crazy powers based on things that you excelled at or had like an inkling for in the human when you were human and how it can get amplified when you get turned into a vampire. And we got to see all these cool ass characters just with all these beautiful crazy powers and then we got to see Bella like learning to use her own power and I was just like a fan like I'm just such a fan of that whole experience for Bella so I always reread this book I've reread this book so many times but just starting with that part with Bella turning into a vampire I always reread it all the time I just am obsessed I reread it all the time so like just on the fact of how many times I've reread it Breaking Dawn but it's not the whole book I'm only I only reread the last 40 percent because um I just don't want to deal with Jacob <laughs> and that whole thing so I always just reread the last 40% of Breaking Dawn. Plus, I'm really obsessed with this cover. Not this front one, but the back of this. The back of this is absolutely gorgeous. Like, it's a still from like the first movie, but it's just, it's so beautiful. Like, I wish this was the front of this, um, like edition or whatever, but it's fine. Um, and I do really like this one as well because it's pink and we get Edward. I love this like still of him in the movie. I just think he looks so beautiful. So I guess it just depends like what I'm looking for when I'm like rereading Twilight or just like thinking about Twilight. Like do I want to start from the beginning, the mundaneness, the beginning of, of this relationship? Do I want to start it or do I want to see Bella becoming a vampire? Like you know it's just they're so they're both really good and they're both just my faves from the series. I just think they're both such good books for different reasons, but they're so good. So <laughs> that is my answer for which is the best Twilight in the franchise. Yeah, like it's just, it has to be one of those two. Okay, next question is top three time management tips. So for this, I think my time management skills come into play because of my job and the type of job that I have. So my hours can be very erratic. Um, I can have days where I will go in later and also leave earlier, but there's also days where I'll go in earlier and leave later or leave at like a normal time. So like my schedule shifts on the daily. Like I don't really have a super set schedule. Because of that, because of my schedule is so erratic, any time that I have blocks of time free is when I try and do as much stuff as I can for me personally, like things that I like enjoy doing, I try and do as much as I can in those blocks of time. And because I'm so like hyper aware of how much free time I don't have, I feel like it makes me super conscious of what I'm doing. And I like try and use my free time to do the things that I want to do, like cleaning, cooking, reading, editing, filming. Like I try and do all that stuff in between my job. Um, and so it's like if I have like free time in the morning like I'm gonna use it to like go buy groceries do some laundry you know clean the bathroom or something like I have to be very mindful of my free time because I don't have a lot of it so I usually really f try and do as much stuff as I can and not spend a lot of time just like on my phone or just like doing something that isn't really going to like help me um so that's like my attitude towards like my free time and I think that's why I'm so like <laughs> anal about it and I'm like very like conscious of like my free time. Um, so does that count as a tip having a really erratic work schedule and so taking advantage of the time that I have free? Um, I also really believe in like cleaning up after yourself and like like just put everything where it goes so that the next day it's not like a bigger issue for you to deal with. So I really like to like do like little cleanings like throughout the day. Like if I see something that's not supposed to be there, I'll clean it up. If I have like 10 minutes free, I'll sweep so that I don't have to do it later. Like I really try and just like make sure my house is like, like I clean in like little bursts so that it's always relatively clean. Because for me, my environment is like super super important like if my house is dirty i am so fucking uncomfortable and i'm angry because i get mad <laughs> that my house is dirty so my space has to be like 
not like spotless but like it needs to be organized it needs to be relatively clean or i will be uncomfortable so i never like letting my house get really dirty where i'm gonna have to spend like a whole day cleaning you know what i mean so i do believe in like cleaning as you go making sure you put things back where it belongs and just like at night just like picking things up and putting them away like your morning self is going to thank you so much like you have no idea like it's just worth it it's like five minutes of just like putting stuff away and then the next day in the morning like your house looks good and you're like okay yes like i'm happy i don't know but that's just like for me personally because like i said my environment is really important to me so i like to keep it clean so that's my second tip just like like doing little micro cleans and then my third thing is that i have timers on my um apps and i also have my notifications turned off for most of my apps um because i feel like once i like go on to like tiktok or instagram or youtube i will be on there for a really long time obscene amount of time <laughs> just scrolling 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 and um a lot of my friends like to send me memes so if i have my notifications turned on i'm gonna get notified that oh like your friend sent you a video like a tiktok go watch it and then i'm gonna fall into a rabbit hole of just like watching tiktok tiktok so i usually turn off my messaging so that i don't get notified that i have a message waiting for me um and i also set timers because like i said like i will literally like blink and it'll be like five hours spent on tiktok so i have an uh, i have a timer i think i have it for like three hours a day of like cumulative like time on my phone so like it like counts instagram twitter and tiktok i think i have them set so when i hit three hours on either of those apps it'll remind me it'll tell me like oh you're like you know your your time limit is about to hit or whatever and i mean i can't ignore it like i don't have to listen to it but it does like snap me out of it and i'm like oh my god i've been on my phone for three fucking hours like that's crazy so i really enjoy using like the timers and like the like and disabling notifications on my phone because i feel like it's really helped me as well i have them turned on right now for instagram just because um, I've just been getting more messages and some of them are time sensitive so I do have them on for that but for other apps I have turned them off um, because I've, I just keep getting notified I'm gonna keep looking at my phone. Those are my tips for time management. This question made me laugh but it was like favorite clown in your clown collection choose only one. This is the only question I will honor because they told me specifically to choose only one so i guess i will only choose one but i'm also going to show you my collection of clowns because i think they're really cool and like it's actually kind of my pride and joy so i am going to show you my clown collection so let's go look at it and then i'll show you my favorite clown from my clown collection okay so this is the clown collection it starts here so we have these big clowns and then i have smaller clowns all along here these are some toys, uh, like rattles, so they actually make noise. Um, this one fell earlier. Very precarious set, <laughs> but um, yeah, there we go. Um, so more clowns, more clowns, more clowns. Um, I'm gonna have this one back here. This one's like a little music box. This clown, I. I haven't reset this because my uh, power went out and I just haven't <laughs> fixed it. And then this isn't really clown, but it's like vintage little like tray that I think is really cute. I have random shit in it, like. But. And then I have this Fisher Price camera, also not clown. And this Vegas bowl is also not clowns. But I don't know. I just feel like it fits the aesthetic. So this is where all my clowns live. And then I have this giant clown painting. Um, I really love this one. I also have this one here and this one over here and then I have this painting that I did for my boyfriend because he loves the Dickies and this is for the Killer Clowns from Outer Space um, like album that they did the album cover for that so I painted that um, and then I also have this here which is just like a little clown mask in a frame sometimes there we go so we got that and then over here is the Killer Clowns shrine. So we have all these Killer Clowns. I think it's so cool. <laughs> I love this thing. So yeah, this is 
essentially the clown collection. Even here, I do have some more clowns. Like I have this clown here, this clown here, and then I have two more clowns up here, but you can't see the other one. So I've got clowns everywhere. I sprinkle them around my house, but my favorite one, I think just because it's mo it's the most like unique thing that I've found so far is this little clown. Um, I forget what these are called, but like <laughs> it has like more parts in it. So it breaks down. It's like those Russian, are they, wait, are these called Russian nesting dolls, right? I think. So you can just keep breaking this down. I love it so much. And then you get to the smallest one. And you just have a bunch, a little, a bunch of clowns. A Russian nesting doll clown. I feel like that is the coolest thing that I've owned, that I own because this was so cool. So this is the littlest little boy. <laughs> I love this. It's so cool. But yeah, I do have them like separated out um, because I just think they look cool. But yeah, this would be, de this would definitely be my favorite clown from my collection so far. I think it's the most unique for my collection. Okay, so next question, favorite shows slash movies. So for favorite shows, I re usually rewatch shows. Um, it's very hard for me to like get into a new show. Uh, I just keep watching the shows that I've been watching for like the last five years. So right now I'm currently doing a rewatch of Parks and Recreation. I love Parks and Rec. I love it so much. Like it's one of my favorite shows ever. So I'm rewatching that. Um, I really love rewatching Bob's Burgers. I love Bob's Burgers. Um, I also really like rewatching Brooklyn Nine Nine because I love Andy Samberg and I think he's so funny. <laughs> love that show so much. I also am super into NCIS. I love NCIS, so I'll rewatch that as well. Um, and obviously, who do you think my favorite character is? You don't even like. You already know who it is, Abby. I fucking love Abby from NCIS. I also um, a while ago watched this show called burn notice which is like this like older like i think 2000s ish spy show and i never finished it because i got like really anxious because it was getting like really high stakes but i loved what i had seen and i really have been itching to kind of like do a rewatch so that i can rewatch and finish burn notice so i love burn notice as well and i really like demon slayer um i love the Demon Slayer anime. I have to watch the newest season. I have read all of the manga, so like story-wise, I know what's gonna happen, but I'm trying to like see it with my eyeball. So I do love the Demon Slayer anime. I think it's so good. I don't care what anyone says because people will love to talk shit about Demon Slayer and like talk talk about how it's such a basic show, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You're just mad that it's popular and it's it's fantastic i love it so much so demon slayer for sure and then for movies i'm gonna go to my letterbox because <laughs> anytime someone asks me a question like this i just forget every single thing i've ever watched in my life so i'm going to go through my movies so okay yes these are some good ones <laughs> so i really love the hellraiser movies some more than others i do have a tier ranking um of the hellraiser movies because some of them are so bad but my favorite hellraiser movie from the franchise is the second one hellraiser 2 hellbound i just think it's so good because sequels usually aren't better but in this case the sequel is so good it's so good i love that movie I love Stay Alive, which is like a two th early 2000s movie. Um, I love Stay Alive, and I feel like nobody talks about it enough because like that movie changed me. Like I was just like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I love Stay Alive so much. So if you like early 2000s horror, and it's so good. It's like techie early 2000s horror. It's just fantastic. I also love Silent Hill. I love the Silent Hill movies. I think they're so freaking good. Also early 2000s horror, but. Like, just visually, they're stunning. I love the storyline. The nurses, oh my god, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I love them so much. I also really like Ghost Ship, which is also another early 2000s movie. I really like 80s horror movies and early 2000s horror movies. Like, that, those two timelines of horror is, like, my favorite. So, Ghost Ship, also an early 2000s movie. Um, so ridiculous. So fantastic. Oh my god, I love that movie so much. Event Horizon such a good movie. Event Horizon is so freaking good. If you liked Hellraiser, you need to watch Event Horizon. 
it's so fantastic space horror is just so well done i really like the return of the living dead which is an 80s horror movie it's so fucking gorgeous like all the characters are so fantastic um i fucking love return of the living dead I also really like The Reanimator, which is also an 80s horror movie. It's so good. The Reanimator is so good. The practical effects, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, is a fantastic freaking 80s horror movie. I think it's just, it's so fucking good. Visually, that is the coolest Nightmare on, on Elm Street from the franchise. Like, it's just so fucking cool. Like, with the needle hands, like, that's, that's literally sick. Ginger Snaps ginger snaps if you liked jennifer's body you gotta watch ginger snaps ginger snap is the original jennifer's body and ginger snaps is so fucking good it's so good it's such a fantastic film i love all the outfits in that bit in that movie all the outfits in that movie are just like they just go off like they're so good and then because i feel like i've been talking a lot Coraline, 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 Coraline. so good i remember i watched that in the theaters when it came out I was in high school and it was so fucking scary. I was like, how is this a children's movie? Like, how is this a children's movie? Like, I literally remember, remember thinking that at the movie theaters when I saw it. Oh, I love Coraline. It's so good. Okay, so next question is favorite pasta noodle. Um, I'm really basic with my pasta. I love a thick noodle. I'm a thick noodle girl. I like a thick noodle. <laughs> I hate angel hair pasta. I think it's fucking... Oh my god, it like, it triggers me every time I see it. I would never get angel hair pasta. I like a thick noodle, so usually fettuccine noodles are fine with me. Um, but like, if I was like, gonna get like, an interesting shape, like, it's not like a pasta, like, in like, that it has to be like a long pasta noodle. Um, I'm a fan of little bow ties. I think they're so cute. <laughs> and I feel like they're so fun to eat. I don't know, they just look like little bows. It's so cute. So, fettuccine or the bow ties are my favorite pasta noodle next question which was a heavy hitting question because i was like oh my god <laughs> i didn't think anyone was gonna ask me this but someone asked me are you planning to go back to medical school and i know that person's an og watcher because whoa that was a while ago so if you didn't know um because i feel like a, probably a lot of you don't know because it's been a while and i have gained more of more subscribers like recently versus when I was in medical school but I was in medical school when I first started my YouTube channel I was in medical school um, and I was three and a half years in when I decided to drop out it was kind of it was a crazy decision for myself for sure like I know I had a lot of people telling me that it was a horrible idea that I was gonna regret it that I didn't know what I was doing um, why would I give up when I only had a semester to finish and I, yeah, like I heard it all. <laughs> I heard it all when I told people that I was planning on dropping out. Um, I was actually gonna drop out on my third year, but they wouldn't refund me my tuition. So I stayed that semester because I was like, well, I already paid for it. So I was just like, I'll stay. But anyways, yes, I have three and a half years of medical school under my belt for no reason whatsoever. Um, I do not plan on going back to medical school. Um, it is actually dropping out is actually the best decision I ever made for myself. And I would never, ever, 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 ever want to go back. I have never regretted it um, since I did it. I have never been happier um, <laughs> than when I dropped out of medical school. That truly was the best decision I've ever made for myself. Um, and it was a hard decision to make. It was a hard decision to make. I knew what I was doing, what I was like sacrificing, what was gonna change. Um, and so I did, it wasn't a decision I took lightly. I had been thinking about it for a really long time. Um, and thankfully I have not regretted it once. So I'm really happy that I didn't regret that decision, but um, no, I would never go back. <laughs> I would never go back. Um, I am planning to go back to school because I do miss going to school and learning. I've always enjoyed learning. I've always enjoyed going to school. So that is an aspect of my life that I want to get back. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get my clinical lab scientist license. And for that, I need to do like a one year like program or basically like they kind of like teach you how to work in 
a clinical lab scientist setting, which is usually hospitals. Um, and so they're going to basically like teach you about different like techniques and stuff like that. And I think that's what I'm going to apply to. Um, the program starts next year. So I'm going to try and apply for that next year and um, see if I get in. So I would go back to school for that. Um, I was also considering going back to school for a master's in biochemistry. But um, I think I'm going to do the one year program first, see how I'm feeling, see if I want to continue back to school. The job that I currently work in is like completely, it's like the furthest thing you could be <laughs> working in with the degree that I have. So um, I would like to actually work in a field that is within, you know, the scope of what I have enjoyed learning and going to school for. So that is kind of my plan is to go to school and then try and get a job back into the world using like my degree and that program or whatever. So, so yeah, long story short, no, I would never go back to medical school, but yes, I would like to go back to school. So that's my answer for that. Okay. So I obviously look super different, but, um, I started that video a couple days ago before work and, um, <laughs> I'm going to try and finish it today on my day off. So, yeah, this is what I mean. You just take the time when you have it. Um, so that's why I look different, but we can continue answering the question. So the next question was favorite video you've ever made. And I don't think I have like a very like specific one, but I do really like that I have a lot of vlogs. Aside from the fact that I just really enjoy watching vlogs and making vlogs, but I really do like having just kind of like the ability to look back at parts of my life. Uh, and see what I was up to and what I was thinking about certain books. Next question is favorite part of booktube. So I really think that my favorite part of booktube just like as a whole would be reading sprints because I think reading sprints are so unique to booktube and to this community. And like when you try to explain to someone that isn't part of the book community what reading sprints are, it's always so hilarious because they're like, what do you mean that you guys just sit there and read? And I'm like, that's it, literally it. <laughs> I'm literally telling you we all get together and we set timers for 45 minutes and we read for those 45 minutes and then we come and we chat and then we go back to reading and that's it so I think it's a really awesome way to like get to know your community as a creator and also as a viewer be able to like get to know the creator that you watch even more because you get to see people's personalities more authentically through live streams versus videos and i feel like that's how i've also like made all my booktube friends is through reading sprints and i got to meet them through that and i got to really get to know them through reading sprints i just really love reading sprints i think they're so like unique and special to booktube that i just i'm such a fan sorry if you can hear my ice machine going in the background it sounds like someone's peeing but it's my ice machine i swear uh, the next question was, would you consider starting a Patreon or a book club? Um, I would love to start a Patreon. I don't know how many people would be interested in a Patreon for me. So let me know if that is something that you're interested in. I was actually surprised at this question because I didn't think it was like something people would care about. Um, but I would love to start a Patreon. I do have some ideas for a Patreon, like things that I would like to do on this Patreon. I think it would be a really fun space for me because I feel like I would be able to share a lot more things that I enjoy doing versus just like my booktube videos because those usually have to be more themed around like bookish content. Um, so it would be fun to have like a place where I can like talk about like clothes, makeup, books obviously but like crafts and other like hobbies that I have because I have a lot of hobbies <laughs> and I would love to have a place to like talk about it and like delve more into it so yeah I would love to start a patreon maybe I should set like a threshold like once I hit like 2k or 2.5k like I would start a patreon but let me know if you would be interested in like a patreon for me because I would love to start one and I do have a lot of ideas next question is my current favorite music so I listen to a lot of music and it really just depends on my mood that day. So I'm going to open my Spotify and just see like what I have been listening to the most, I guess. Like, so I've been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift because I recently started listening to Taylor Swift. So I have obviously a lot of Taylor Swift um, albums on my Spotify. Um, and if you're curious, because I know a lot of you guys enjoy Taylor Swift, my favorite song so far has been... 
it's kind of a tie like it really depends like my mood but i really like don't blame me and i did something bad and then i really like like my favorite album so far from the ones that i've listened to and i don't like every single song on the album but like it's like i definitely have the most liked songs on that album is midnight's um i just really like taylor swift when she has more sounds in her background like that it's not just her singing um with like a guitar in the background like i really like when she has more elements in her music and that it's like a little bit more like poppy and like heavier on the beats um i find that those are the taylor swift songs that i like the most so from like the midnight's album i think yeah that's what it's called midnight's album my favorite song from that is vigilante shit i also really like bejeweled um lavender haze anti-hero and karma and midnight rain are some of my faves from that um album specifically i really like vigilante shit i think it's just so good i'm like fuck yeah fuck yeah so i've been listening to a lot of taylor swift obviously so like in general you'll find me listening to goth music like all the time because that's just like the music i listen to the most i think so just i have a goth playlist and that i just kind of cycle through it and i just play it i've also really been enjoying portishead the dummy album i really like that album i think it's so good and i think visually like just the album cover is so cool because it's just like blue i don't know i just really like it i think it's a really solid album cover like it's nothing crazy but for some reason i'm like a huge fan i'm also listening to a lot of deftones I usually listen mostly to Diamond Eyes, but I've been listening a lot to White Pony, Around the Fur. Um, those are kind of like the main three. And also Saturday Night Wrist. I also really like that album too. So I've been cycling a lot of like Deftones. I listen to a lot of Spanish music, which I don't know how many of you guys like like Spanish music, but I, I listen to a lot of Spanish music. Yeah, I just kind of cycle through um, different songs depending on my mood. Next question, fave places you've traveled to. So I haven't like gone a lot of places um but i have been to a lot of places in mexico so i've been to guanajuato which is probably my one of my favorite places that i've been to mexico guanajuato jalisco colima um i've been to ciudad de mexico which i also really enjoyed and i want to go back because i wasn't old enough to like fully like enjoy ciudad de mexico so i would love to go back to ciudad de mexico and then um i think like last year i did a road trip through like essentially kind of like half of the united states because <laughs> we were helping um one of my boyfriend's family members move to north dakota so we drove from like california to north dakota and we like you know essentially started from california went up to oregon washington and then i think we went through montana and then i think we finally ended at north dakota and then when we were coming back to california i think i think we might have gone through i don't know if, i don't know if we went through south dakota or and then to nebraska or if we crossed wyoming or something something happened along that and then i know we went to colorado because colorado was fucking beautiful and we went camping in colorado it was cold as fuck but that was fun um i know i think we did cross through utah a little bit and then nevada through las vegas and then back to uh like la california so that was really fun so i got to see like a lot of the united states but not like in a way that i would like to because it was just a lot of driving um but like from that experience i really liked washington and i really liked colorado i've also been to chicago i forgot about that i went to chicago <laughs> i liked chicago too it was fun have i been anywhere else i'm like looking at a map of the united states and i'm like where else have i been but yeah and Mexico, I really like, um, I really enjoyed Guanajuato. I would really like to go back to Guanajuato and I want to go to Oaxaca. Oh, I also went to Tulum in Mexico. Also love Tulum. I would love to go back to Tulum. It was so fucking nice. Um, so yeah, those have been some of my favorite places that I've been to, but I definitely want to go to like Europe. That's definitely like on my wish list. I really want to go to Ireland. I'm like, I don't know. I have this fascination that I really want to go to Ireland. I really want to go to Scotland um i really want to go to japan duh so much places i would like to go to <laughs> we'll see if we get there so next question dream cast for the akatar tv show now i am fully against a live action akatar tv show i just don't think it's gonna be good i think the cgi is gonna look terrible for all the magic 
Who the fuck are you gonna cast for Reese? There's no man, there's no man alive that could pull off Reese. I just don't think that there is any humans alive <laughs> that could play these characters, especially the men. And I also don't think the magic would look cool. Like I think it would just look cheesy and like fake. I don't know. I am fully 100% on board for an animated Akatar TV show. I think it would look so fucking fantastic. I think it would be such a hit. There's so much beautiful like fan art that artists have created around the series. And it's just like, can you imagine if like they had the funding to create like a whole ass TV show with this? Oh my God. I just like, I'm fully on board with a animated TV show, but I am not on board at all for a live action TV show of Akatar. I just, I don't think it's going to be good. I really don't think it's going to be good. Next question is what's the thing you like and dislike about Halloween? Um, okay. So I think the, the the thing I like most about Halloween is just dressing up. I am a huge fan of costume parties. Any party that I ever throw, whether it's around Halloween time or not, I will make it into a costume party every single time. I without fail. I love costume parties. I love dressing up. I love people dressing up coming to these parties. I just think it's so much fun. It's just so much fun. Um, so that's like my favorite part of Halloween is just like dressing up and having these parties and having people dress up It's just so much fun. Like it's just so much fun And then obviously like the decor just love the decor of you know Halloween I think the thing I hate about Halloween is probably Resellers for Halloween stuff. I really hate that people go to stores and buy these things um in like large quantities so that other people can't get them because they're going to sell them for a ridiculous upmark on you know different websites that shit pisses me off like resellers just piss me off like in general even like book resellers like that will like sell copies of older books for like obscene amount of money like when fourth wing when the first like edition with the sprayed edges was sold out and people were selling copies for like two three hundred dollars like I was so furious because I'm like, that is evil. Like, that's evil. And I hate that people do that with Halloween decor because it's just like, why are you ruining this for people that want to go buy that stuff because they want to have it in their home? Why do you have to be so fucked up? Like, <laughs> that is so fucking annoying and it pisses me off to no end. I really, really dislike resellers. I think it's just fucked up. Like, let people be able to buy the things they want at a fucking normal price. Like, Ugh, ugh. So yeah, that's probably the, the thing I hate most about Halloween. So next question is, what's the worst book you've ever read? So I actually went onto my Goodreads and I looked at my rating. I've only ever given three books one star on Goodreads, which is actually surprising. I don't give a lot of one stars. Like I think I can find a redeeming quality in a lot of books, um, but these I was just like, no. First one, The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. I fucking hate this book. It's so dumb. That's literally what my review was, dumb. The thing that pissed me off the most was like, okay, write like a possession horror, like whatever, it's fine. Like it doesn't have to be good. But the thing that pissed me off about that book, the author was making, was trying to make it seem like this book was nonfiction. And I gave it one star because I was like, this is dumb. I also gave Off Season by Jack Ketchum one star. <laughs> This book was one of the first books I read when I was like trying out extreme horror as a genre. So like I wonder now that if I read it now when I have read a lot more extreme horror like what I would think about it. Um, so I do actually plan to do a reread of this book and just see like do I still give it one star um, or was that because I wasn't used to the genre itself. Gave it a one star because I just like hated the way the women were portrayed. I hated that there was so much violence against women versus how much violence there was against the men. Um, and it's just like, it's, I mean, it's obviously disgusting. It's extreme war. It's fucking disgusting. But it was the way that like the women were tortured so horrifically while the men were just like stabbed really pissed me off. And that's why I give it one star. So I don't know if like my opinion will change if I do a reread, if that was like my biggest problem with it, because it's not like that's going to change. But I still want to do a reread to see if it does. So yeah. So the third book that I gave a one star rating to was Universal Harvester by John Darniel. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But that book sounds so cool. Like if you go on the Goodreads page and you read 
the like synopsis it sounds like it's gonna be so good it, it makes you feel like it's gonna be kind of like the ring or like vhs in book format it's gonna be creepy but literally nothing happens in that book absolutely nothing happens i i hate this book <laughs> Yeah, I really, really despise Universal Harvester because it just sounds so cool and then nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. Nothing. Nothing. I hate it. But yeah, those are the only three books I've ever gave one star to. Um, I'm sure there's other books that I haven't liked, but like I don't really like linger too much on books that I don't like. I just kind of forget about them and I just move on, you know? So... I might have other books that I hated, but I really can't think of them from the top of my head. So so the next question is fave Halloween decor. So probably would have to be a tie between my eyeball light. Oh my God. It's so cool. This or my eyeball pillow. One of these two. I love these two things. I think they're so cool. This eyeball light though. She's kind of the winner though, I think. If I had to make like a decision about just one thing, it would probably be this. And I got this this year at Michael's. Immediately picked it up when I saw it at, this, at the Michael's. I was like, oh my God, I need that. And the next question, fave clothing item you own. I'm actually wearing it. It's my Edward shirt, just kidding. But I mean, I do love the shirt. It's actually this cardigan I thrifted. It has this jack-o-lantern. It has stars on the arm. And this always reminds me of Coraline. It has this little jack-o-lantern, the moon, uh, an owl, and then a black cat. I don't know, I love this cardigan. I think it's so cute. I always get a lot of compliments when I wear it. So the next question was about Olive. They wanted to see Olive and happy to oblige. I had to come to her. She refused to get up from her bed, as you can see. Um, <laughs> but Olive is seven years old. She is an Aries, so she uh, is very hyper when she wants to be. Not right now, but when she wants to be, she can she can get excited. Um, she is a rescue I got her from the local shelter. And she's mad that I'm talking next to her. I got her from the local shelter. I think she was like about like a year and a half when I adopted her. Her her name used to be Truffles when I adopted her her name was truffles but i renamed her olive um but i think truffles is so funny that that was her name i think it's because she's like you know like tan you know um she has chronic seizures so she takes medication for that and she also has a lot of allergy problems especially with her skin so she's always usually breaking out in in some type of hive or something's going on with her paws um so yeah she has to be on a very strict diet um and she can't really eat like a lot of different proteins because she usually will react to them so she's on a very she's on a very strict diet um and then she has her medication that she takes and yeah she's a very sleepy girl she's a very sleepy girl but yeah so those are some facts about miss o here i call her miss o all the time i just think you know, I don't know why, it's just fitting. I feel like everyone that has a pet has like a thousand different names for their pet and Olive is no exception to the rule. She got a lot of names, but yeah. So, Miss O. <laughs> so the final question is which YouTubers do you recommend? So um, I'm gonna tell you guys some of my favorite creators. So the first person I have is Lexi from Books with Lexi. I feel like Lexi is one of the most creative people on booktube, like, the readathons that they have created have been some of the most unique readathons I've ever like participated in and I'm always so shocked by like how creative and how cool their readathon ideas are. So Lexi actually has a readathon coming up in October. It's called Hollow Weekend. I will leave the announcement video linked down below because I think it's going to be super fun and I cannot wait for that readathon. So yes, I would definitely recommend Lexi's channel. Another channel I really like is Katrina from Katrina Brown. Katrina reads so much and she reads so many horror books. And I feel like I hear about so many different horror books from Katrina specifically. Like I feel like she's always reading books that I've never heard of. And I feel like I get a lot of like my horror recommendations from her um, because she just reads so much stuff. And she always has so many books to like talk about like i feel like her channel is like really good for finding 
um, like a lot of horror books. So if you wanted to get into horror, I would definitely recommend Katrina's channel. I love her vlogs and I love listening to her talk about books. And she recently started a book club, which is called the Reaper Book Club. And all the books that she picks are going to be around 200 pages or under 200 pages. So if you're looking for some like horror, like short horror novellas, I would definitely recommend Katrina and specifically her book club because that's going to be like its kind of focus. Next person is Kelsey from Slime and Slashers. I love Kelsey's, like, her attitude, like, her vibe is just, I, I love watching her videos. Like, I think that her personality is, like, so fantastic. She has a personality that, like, literally makes you, like, laugh with her. And, like, she, she just feels like, even just watching, like, one of her videos, like, I feel like you get the sense that she's, like, your friend. Like, immediately. I think Kelsey is such a sweetheart. I love her videos. And I love her Patreon. Like, I'm part of Kelsey's Patreon. And I love being a part of Kelsey's Patreon. She actually has a readathon coming up for her patrons. And it's, like, a carnival-themed, clown-themed readathon. Which, I mean, come on. It just sounds so much fun. So, I really love Kelsey's videos. Um, and I especially love her vlogs. Um, I just think... They're so fun and I love her Patreon. Like I truly am such a fan of Kelsey's Patreon. Next person is Tiana from Lil Onishi. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I love Tiana's videos. I love her vlogs. They're so aesthetic. They're so like, every time I watch them, like I just feel like I want to play like a raining like ambient sound in the background. Like I just think they're so like aesthetically pleasing. I love watching Tiana's video and I love listening to her talk about books. And I feel like I also discover a lot of different like romance from her channel um, because I feel like we have like similar tastes with like romance. So I like, like I like checking out books that she really enjoyed. I really enjoy Tiana's channel. I think it's just super, super aesthetic and it's just like, it's so good. Like her ambient lighting top tier. Next is Lauren from Happy Haunts Library. I feel like Lauren's videos are always super thematic. Like any video she makes, it has a theme and that theme is like executed to perfection. She also did like a shark week themed like reading vlog. Loved it. There was like a drink that she made. I want to try it. I need to make that drink actually. Um, but I really enjoy Lauren's videos. Um, and also if you really like Disney stuff too, Lauren does a lot of like Disney stuff. So if that's also something you enjoy, I would definitely recommend Lauren's uh, channel. And then finally, I want to talk about Katie from Katie is Reading. I love Katie's videos. They're so like, they're cinematic masterpieces. <laughs> like her filming is just so spectacular. Um, I love when like she does like her autumn themed vlogs like they're just so beautiful like california doesn't really get you know beautiful fall we don't see the colors change on the leaves it's just hot all the time so like through katie's like autumn themed vlogs i get to live vicariously through her like i feel like oh look the leaves are changing in katie's vlog like and i'm just like wow that must be so beautiful <laughs> so i love katie's vlogs i think she's is just like her vlogs, the way she films is just like super, super amazing B-roll. Um, and I also really like listening to Katie talk about books. Like she had a video where she did like a spoiler filled uh, Good Girl's Guide to Murder reading vlog. I have no interest in reading A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, um, but I loved watching that vlog and I was like, cool, like now I don't even have to read it. I just got the whole thing from this video, but like I love watching her videos and the way that she discusses books, I also really enjoy. So I really enjoy Katie's uh, vlogs and just videos in general. So yeah, I really love all those YouTube channels. Um, I think they are fantastic creators and I would definitely, definitely say to subscribe because they all make amazing content. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed like this more like personal video, I guess, um, and enjoyed like getting to know me a little bit more. Um, I thought it was really fun. I'm so sorry that it's so long, but you know, I warned you guys in the beginning, uh, I like to talk. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to keep with more content for me, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.